We can have a fun show if we want to have a fun show. If we want to have a sad, bummer, talk about shit show, then that's fine. But if we want to have an upbeat show, I don't think we should let the the problems of the world try to fucking rain on our goddamn parade. Not this Pride Month. I'm not having it. <laughs> I'm not gonna fucking let this shit ruin this for me. It's the going off podcast. Rest <laughs> <of the news. laughs> so you know what? This is exactly why. And I'm gonna say this now that we're fucking on the record. This is why, to quote Biggie Langston, sort of, one month ain't enough, man. I need three. I'm celebrating the summer of Pride. Pride month <laughs> is cute. But if Trump ain't going to acknowledge it, then fuck it. I'm rewriting the rules. It's three months it's now. It's summer of pride, bitch. Yeah. We got a lot of uh, interesting shit lined up on this uh, on this week's episode. We got Open Mike Eagle joining us in a little bit. And we've got two album reviews. One Patreon requested. Another one extremely obvious. Uh, this week's Patreon requested album review is from Dr. Goatman. Requesting Radiohead's In Rainbows. And if you have an album that you want to request for the Going Off podcast, it is simple. It is a one-time Patreon pledge to either uh, patreon.com slash rapcritic or patreon.com slash muse. Check our pages for details. Darren, how familiar are you with Radiohead? Uh, I'm a creep and that's about it. <laughs> mm. Okay, cool. <laughs> that is where it begins and ends. <laughs> well, you know what, folks? Uh, you're in luck, because we are on the exact same page. Oh, okay, okay, okay. On Radiohead. I uh, I never got into them. I never hated them, you know? Mm -hmm. They were just kind of there. Yeah, they were, like, I knew they were huge, but it just didn't happen near me. Y you know what it is? It's like, you are, you, especially as a younger brother... You are introduced, like a younger sibling in general, you're introduced to the music of the time through your older sibling. So if my older sister's not listening to Radiohead, I, I, it just doesn't happen to me, you know? Because cause she gets money to buy records first, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Yeah, the only songs of theirs I'm familiar with are the big hits. Your, your Creep, your Karma Police. I remember hearing that on the radio back in the day. I decided to check out a couple of, you know, their songs. You're like, oh, what are the big hits, you know, so I can hear what's mm. going on. I listened to Paranoid Android. What, oh, yeah. What the fuck was that shit? Like, I know people are probably nostalgic for it now because, you know, it, it's reached that threshold and, oh, it's super artistic. And now people are like, oh, man, it's hard to... Oh, what the fuck was that? <laughs> I was like, I was watching this video. I'm listening to the song. I'm like, this is like an inverted Bohemian Rhapsody. Like, it's just going to all of these places and it's so weird. And I... I want to stop this song, but I know I'm supposed to respect it because of, like, art artistry and shit, but what the fuck is happening? <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, uh, In Rainbows was a bit more, uh, reserved. Um, it was very much, uh, I watched a video of them r playing most of the album in what was basically a basement, and... I don't know if those were the re the recordings that made it on the album or not. They didn't sound much different, but yeah, that's kind of what the album felt like. It, it incorporated a lot of like um, digital music elements into rock music, which is very interesting. That is my main my main takeaway. The album was interesting. I uh, I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. The the photo I sent you on Twitter. <laughs> Was me listening to the album on a, a particularly uh, down tempo uh, number, which the album kind of uh, goes back and forth with that. And um, my preference leans more towards the ones with the cool little funky drum bits. Oh, uh, number one, yeah, like the first track, yeah. It's like half and half, because you got that, and then you got your other tracks where fucking Tom York is just. Man, he is letting those words take. As long as he wants. <laughs> the, the two albums we got this week, The Carters and Radiohead, the best way I can describe it is both of these albums are two very different examples of artists doing exactly what they want to do. Oh, that's interesting, actually, yeah. Like, you can listen to an album 
and it just doesn't feel genuine. It doesn't feel like the heart is there. It feels like, you know, this is the fifth album of my five album deal, and we're just really chugging this along. We're just, we have senior-itis. We're looking at the <laughs> clock. These albums, you don't feel that. You actually feel like there's a lot of interest, and there's a lot of doing it their way. Yeah, this does sound like the album of someone, like, just starting out and making their unique sound. Like, this doesn't sound like a, uh, what, 10-year-old, 15-year-old band at this point? They had just got off a major label, and this album was initially Pay What You Want. Oh, yeah! Because Tech 9 did that around the same time. Which, for a major musical act, was unheard of. It's, it's a solid album, but... <sighs> okay, can I say this? Some of the songs feel a little samey. I think I just need to come out and say it. Yes, 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 yes. Some songs absolutely sound very much the same. I'm trying to remember which ones they Jigsaw were. Jigsaw falling into place. I, it, it was kind of hard for me to tune in at, at that point because I was like, I could swear I've already heard this style. You know? Oh, yeah, well, very, very much towards the end. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, videotape was a great ending, though. So let me start off with my favorite track. I think you know what it is. Nude? Oh, my God. I could imagine, like, I'm not, I, I don't do LSD, <laughs> but I could imagine someone, like, dropping that shit, like, right when it starts kicking in, just with the backwards. I was like, oh, my God. Like, at first, I was just like, I don't know how to feel about this. This is just making me feel weird. And then after the first second listen, I'm like, yo, this is fucking gorgeous. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was definitely my favorite track on the album. The one I didn't know how to feel about was Weird Fishes. Oh, I liked that one. The lyrics are kind of odd, you know, and the weird pluralization of fishes, if you can look past that. But musically, I was like, all right, I'm here for this. You know, like, for me, when you talk about Sound the Same, uh, Reckoner was one that by that point I was like, I swear I heard this before. And ma maybe Body Snatchers? I'm trying to remember which one it reminded me of. No, Body Snatchers was like the, the uh, up-tempo one. That was more... Oh, that's right. Because it was right after 15 Steps, so, you know, they, they were switching it up, you know. You know, he's writing very abstractly, you know, it's very sort of gorillas type of, type of stuff. And, like, I'm here for that. My problem is, w when you do something that sounds a little too silly, and it's just like, do you, I know you're being experimental and abstract, but you've got to know this sounds a little silly. And to have a song where you're like, I get eaten by the worms and weird fishes. It's like, you know that sounds silly. You've got to know that's a weird fishes. Like, what? what? Like, not even a type of fish, just you know, all types of weird fishes. Like, what? Like, yeah, it just sounds... It doesn't sound like the song title of someone making a serious type of song. So that just took me out of it. And especially since the song, like, the verses are interesting. They're about, like, you know, someone uh, trying to follow someone even though, you know, you, you know it's a bad idea. And it's sort of a metaphor for uh, sirens, uh, you know, on the sea luring men to their death. I was like, oh, that's an interesting idea. But weird fishes. Like, what? Ugh, I don't know. It just threw me off. Um, and All I Need was definitely a very interesting track, um, especially when I first listened to it and I thought it was just like a generic love song, and then I listened to the verses, especially first two, where he says, I'm a moth who just wants to share your light, I'm just an insect trying to get out of the night, I only stick with you because there are no others, and that, whew, like, that is an example of someone using very simple poetry to say something really grand. You know, that sense of clinginess and, and, and the idea of, like, I'm hanging on to you because I don't have anyone else. You know, like, ah, that, that, re and especially using it as, like, the metaphor for, you know, insects and how moths, you know, st stick around lights. That, like, that was cool. That was so cool. Especially since moths, you know, the light from a, um, you know, the light actually is just hot and would just hurt a moth. You know what I mean? Like, that's basically it, you know? The lyrics, you can definitely tell there was a good bit of, like, personal shit that went into a lot of it. And especially if you watch the video, like, they're fucking feeling this shit. And that that's why, like... I couldn't listen to a line like being eaten by weird fishes or whatever and be and grade it too harshly because I imagine it's like, I just fucking felt right at the time. 
You know, like, that's what I got from this album, that, like, I just fucking wrote some shit down, and it felt right, and I just fucking put it out there, because that's what I felt like I needed to say. It's like, alright. Because a lot of this, like, the first time I listened to it, I just listened to it straight. The second time I listened to it, I listened to it with the lyrics, so I could actually read along. And both times... It was like, you know, I could probably listen to this as it's, like, playing in the background while I'm doing something else. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's very backgroundy, and I could appreciate it that way because it's so fucking chill. You know, like, it's very relaxing. It's very just floaty. It's very spacey. But it also works on the layer of if you're reading along and you know what's what's being said, it's like, wow, he's, you know... He's saying some pretty deep shit also. So it can be appreciated kind of on both levels, which is nice. But I don't think personally that this would be something I would, uh, I'd probably just like go out of my way to listen to you normally. Yeah, this is weird that we're both kind of having this like, we've been doing this. We're like, this is good, but I don't want to listen to it. (laughs) Yeah, right. Like it works, but... I kind of got the feeling of, I want to see what else Radiohead does, because I can see that they're amazing musicians. Like, I don't even think we said anything about that, but just, like, the fucking, the drumming is awesome. Mm -hmm. Just, like, like the bass, it all sounds so good. And it's weird, like, Tom could really be saying anything, (laughs) and I think it would work because I love his voice, Mm. but it's, like, half the time it's just kind of, like... Uh, 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 it's like you know those might not even be words those don't have to be but i like it you know at the end of the day i could i could see giving this a four out of five right because it's like this is really sound work uh but i do see some of the songs getting kind of lost in the mix as far as like i'm gonna listen to this entire album again like i definitely like 15 step nude you know video uh what was it videotapes yeah, those are definitely, I, I'm not arguing with you on whether or not those are classic songs, but a, as a whole, I, I, I could definitely see it being like, mm, you know, it's cool. Uh, you know, like, I, if you're looking for more experimental stuff and you want a place to go, this is for you. But if you're looking for something that's going to, like, rock with you, maybe go with Body Snatchers and Nude, you know, to challenge you, you know what I'm saying? If you're looking for something uh, uh, really that gets into you, go to All I Need, but... Yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's like, drop what you're doing right now and, and head to Spotify and listen to this. But I don't think there's much more to say about In Rainbows, yeah. so let's move on over. Oh, let's get to why you're all here. <laughs> let's move on over to The Carters. Woo! Everything is Love. The album we didn't know we wanted. The <laughs> album we didn't know we needed. Darren. <laughs> Look. We, I'm just gonna steal your catchphrase here for a second. Look, look. <laughs> we we are coming off the heels of twenty. What was it? Sixteen lemonade and four forty four. Here we are at the crossroads between the long-awaited sequel successor to Lemonade and whatever the fuck Jay Z is doing. And <laughs> I gotta say, I uh, I wasn't ready. <laughs> I, uh, I don't think I was ready for this shit. You got to give me more warning than this for one. Because I don't think I got enough listens in. Honestly, like, I hate that. I hate when it's like, oh, it just fucking came out. You got to gotta talk. It's like, man, I got to. I'm still fucking taking this shit in. <laughs> just dealing with all the all the subliminals. All the fucking melodies and harmonies and messages and shit. Oh, man. We a uh, summer. <laughs> Start at the top. I didn't know how to feel about it when I first heard it, man. Because I, I honestly think I was still trying to figure out what was happening to me as I was listening to it. What is this? <laughs> uh, yeah, right? Like, okay, it's just called the Carters, right? Okay, so what is this going to be? Like, uh, is this like Beyonce featuring Jay-Z or... What is this going to end up being? So when you hear Summer and Beyonce's killing it, 
And you just hear Jay-Z kind of in the background just repeating words. Let it breathe. And it's like, it oh, uh, is, this, it's like, is, is, that, is that his contribution? Oh, no. <laughs> like, I'd rather just, I'd rather not even be there if that's all it's going to fucking be. <laughs> but no, it actually ends up being, dare I say, kind of what you liked about Lemonade mixed mm. with stuff you liked about 444. Yeah, it, it it feels like you know. I remember when I first listened to this, I was like, "What is this like? A Beyonce my first rap album sort of like? What's going on?" Because <laughs> you know, it felt like she was rapping a lot. Beyonce over trap beats is something I'm still trying to get used to. Yeah, yeah, and and I'm not gonna lie, there are a couple of times where I straight up didn't like it. Um, track number two, even though the music video, oh my god, that music video was so tight. Like, oh my god, the art and the blackness and the... Ah, oh, it was beautiful. Um, but the actual, you know, song itself... Man, I like that song. Man, it, it, it felt so like, hey, I'm Beyonce and I'm rapping. And it's like, <laughs> you know... I'm like, here to say. Little, yeah, like she says, uh, want to go with me? He like to roll the weed. He want to be with me. He want to give me that vitamin D. Like, it's like... Like, this is, this is like 17-year-old My First Rap Lyrics type of, like, brags, you know? Oh, that vitamin D, uh, I'm wondering... I can feel her, like, poking <laughs> me in the ribs with her elbow, like, okay, you know? And then, and then, yeah, 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 bottom of jet. Yeah, 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 and oh my god, I am so tired of fucking Patek fucking watches. They mentioned that shit more than goddamn Hue Blows. Remember when Jay-Z was like, oh, I got the Hue Blow with the Hue Blow. <laughs> Dude, I, I am so tired of Patek's, bro. Like, I, no one's buying these fucking watches. <laughs> they cost too much. Stop it. I'm, I'm happy for them, right? Like, I'm not trying to steal their shine. I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to rain on their parade. But, yeah, there is a certain point. Like, I remember when it was like, hey, I'm not putting this on Spotify. It's like, yeah, fuck everyone else who wanted to hear it. Like, <laughs> right? Like, you know, it does kind of like, feel like a little bit of a fuck the common man sort of thing. It kind of is. And, like, I don't know. I get a kind of Michael Jordan vibe from that. You know what I mean? <laughs> when, when someone asked him, hey, you know, you're selling these Jordans and you're an icon to these kids in these, under, in these underdeveloped urban neighborhoods and they look up to you and they want to buy a pair of Jordans but but they can't afford them and Michael Jordan's like well it isn't for them it's like oh oh, oh shit oh. <laughs> oh my god it's basically like too fuck bad so when I hear Beyonce be like yeah we're not putting this shit on Spotify it's like <laughs> on one hand it's like yeah I get it Jay-Z wasted a lot of money on that music platform that y'all are still trying to act like is a fucking thing that people like it was really funny the way she said it though it, it, you know what it was it was one of those things where it's just like I don't know if I'm cool with this because the, it's just so I don't give a fuck <laughs> Exactly, like, <laughs> right? Like, I understand it and I respect it, but at the same time, right. I, I feel some oh type of God. way about it. Yeah, she says, she says, if I gave two fucks, two fucks! <laughs> like, she, 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 like, repeated it. I almost had to be like, oh, wait. <laughs> like, she, like, she stopped the track and she'd be like, hold on a second. <laughs> if I gave two fucks, two fucks about streaming numbers, I would have put Lemonade up on Spotify. So fuck you. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> That's mad unnecessary. It's like, I really don't know how to feel. <laughs> Especially by now. If, if you right? haven't heard... Like, dude, we just gave you two classic albums. We, we're allowed to flex for a little bit. <laughs> and if you haven't heard Lemonade by now, just buy the fucking CD. It, like, <laughs> right. it's, it's been over two years. We get Jay Z's verse when he finally comes in because like, and I was kind of worried. He's like, "Oh, is this whole album just gonna be Beyonce tries to rap for for two verses, and then finally Jay Z's like, all right, well, here's what rapping actually sounds like,' <laughs> you know? And um, but I, I'm even gonna say like, for Jay Z, I'm not gonna lie, like, is it just me or is he like not as focused on flow as much? There's sometimes where it feels like he's forcing in a couple of syllables, and it's just like, 
dude, you could have just cut out like that one or two syllables and this would have flowed perfectly. There's that first part in Jay-Z's verse where he's calling out uh, George Zimmerman. Meanwhile, Georgie Porgy's sitting and sending me threats. Save your breath, you couldn't beat a flight of steps. Like, how, <laughs> how he fucking... How, if you listen to the song, how he fucking beat a flight of steps, how he, like, crams that in. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you probably could have done that, and it would have sounded a little better, you know? Like, yeah, like when he says, um, a nigga late, but he best dressed, got slowed down by the weight of my necklaces. (laughs) In that point, he's proving to you, as if you weren't sure already, he oh, can, he has more than one, He can he? afford more than one. And that's important because you, the listener, care about how many necklaces he has. Oh, and then he says, uh, these people just trying to get me out the paint because I cook collard greens and yams better than you ain't. Come on, you know no one says that. You know <laughs> no one says that. <laughs> he says something that I really think that people didn't really just figure out the little clever shit he's throwing in there. He says, I remember summer nights in the projects, bullet rounds interrupted my chi, when the worst thing that could happen zipped up his jacket and ran back down the street. I don't think people really figured out what he was trying to say there, because I was trying to see if someone else saw it. When the worst thing that could happen zipped up his jacket and ran back down the street. He's talking about himself. He's saying that he's the worst thing that could happen to this fucking city. And that it's just like, yeah, but then he's saying, now I'm in Bel Air, only the nights get cold. I wrapped uh, a yellow jacket around B. It's not lost on me. Music has my kids sound asleep. Like, that's awesome. Like, the idea of, like, you know, because usually it's like, oh, playing music, you know, that keeps you up at night. You know, when someone's playing music that's too loud, it's just like, this music is literally responsible for my children being able to sleep at night. Like, ah, it's so slick. Motorcade when we came through. Presidential with the planes, too. One better get with the residential. Undefeated with the cane, too. I said no to the Super Bowl. You need me. I don't need you. Every night we in the end zone. Tell the uh, tell the NFL we in stadiums too. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> but you know, I I will say though, for ancient, like, can I just say this? No one's believing that Jay Z and Beyonce are crowd surfing. Who fucking did do that shit? Where someone like it, it was one of the younger dudes like jumped well, off. Lucy Vert. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's fucking little Lucy Vert's game. Fucking how old is Jay Z? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just thinking about <laughs> how old ass Jay Z with his growing his hair out is gonna be jumping off a fucking stage. You're not gonna see it. Never. Yeah. You wouldn't have seen it in '96. You're not gonna see it in 2006. Yeah. Like, he's not that guy. No. I'm just watching the video and like, you guys look regal, elegant, cool, calm, collected. You're not going ape shit. Like that's not you guys. Yeah, I saw Beyonce trying to go ape shit in that video. And someone made a really good point saying that when she's, like, throwing that dress around. That yeah, it, yeah. it looks like when you try to put a fitted sheet on a bed and it won't fit. <laughs> and you just fucking throw a tantrum and you're like, well, fuck it! <laughs> it was, that was that one line I wanted to reference before we moved on. Uh, that was a bit like a, ooh, I thought. It was a bit kind of, hmm. Where uh, Beyonce goes, uh... You got Hova and Beezus watch the throne. Okay, can I say that that was a fucking throwing down the gauntlet on Kanye. (laughs) This is your ass ain't invited. Yeah, exactly. We have effectively moved the fuck on from your ass. (laughs) This is fucking, they rebooted the series and replaced the character and acted like it didn't even fucking matter. Like... (laughs) <laughs> they're fucking recalling all the copies of fucking Watch the Throne and they're putting Beyonce and all the all the fucking tracks. She, she's on Otis now. That oh, whole shit and- about what's she on a fish fillet never happened. <laughs> Strike it from the record. Retcon. <laughs> <laughs> Boss was the first song where I was like, "This is a classic song right here." Like I I, I know we're throwing around that word, but yo, you can't listen to Bo- when this man said, "Look." The brass. The fucking chill-ass production. Before you even hear any words. No cap. False, nigga. You not a boss. You got a boss. Nigga's getting jerked. That shit still hurts. I take it personally. Nigga's rather work for the man than to work with me. Just so they could pretend they're on my level. That shit's irking to me. Pride always goes before the fall. Almost certainly. I'm like, oh. Oh, man. And you know who he's talking to. That's the thing. 
your nose. Oh, oh, that's just like, ah. And it's so, like, it's so much, be- like, this is the evolution of diss records. Like, it's just, like, I don't need to say your na- Like, this is sneak dissing on a whole new level. Because Jay-Z's always done this before, but oh, my God, that stung. Like, that really hurt. Like, even, like, I have nothing to do with this shit. And my <laughs> feelings are hurt. Like, right. <laughs> Everybody's a boss until it's time to pay for the office. I'm like, oh no! Oh no! Till them invoices separate the men from the boys. Oh no! <laughs> and then, boom! Then when he says, but see, when he ended the verse, he made it about more than just a diss, right? This is about longevity. He says, we measure success by how many people are successful next to you. Here, we say you're broke if everybody goes broke except for you. I'm like, mmm. That uh, we need to hear stuff like that because I'm so fucking sick and tired of these rappers flashing these fucking chains, looking rich as fuck, and all their homeboys look broke as fuck. So it's just like, well, what's going on here? Like it, <laughs> you're not spreading the wealth, my guy, <laughs> you know. And it's not just that, not just like flossing, but like, like just being in control of your shit. Like I've seen some guys, you know, you know how we have the whole thing of. You know, I'm famous and I'm going to make my friend famous too. You know, like, we know that's like a whole trope and, you know, it's annoying. But at the same time, it's just like, it is good to look out for your friends though. And we see that some people are like, hey, this person might not have a huge thing, but you see how they're like, you know, they're supporting them. You know what I'm saying? And you see that with with Jay-Z, especially when he brought up the Meek Mill thing. I didn't know about that. Apparently, he's like literally responsible for him getting bail and getting out of jail. I was like, oh oh, shit. (laughs) Well, what I was going to say was, and then we could try to figure something out. I'm okay with brag rap. You know, I've never had a problem with it or whatever. But this album made me think, like, maybe that should be reserved for, like, a certain level. You know, like, these two are clearly, you know, head and shoulders above the rest of the fucking game. I never want to hear... Fucking Drake, try that shit again, you know? Because it's like, (laughs) you don't have it like that. You're never going to have it like that. (laughs) And it sounds like at this point, if anyone does, it's fucking pretending. It's trying. It's masquerading. (laughs) And it's like, you know what? I can't take that seriously anymore because I see what success is. Success is more than the money. Success is making a future for your family, for everyone around you. Drake right. Drake is hiding a child. <laughs> I never want to hear that shit from anyone. Unless you have those type of credentials and you could back that shit up. Beyonce, she's like, that, this is where she says the, I could give two fucks, two fucks. About shit. And then she's like, um, and then he says, I ain't never seen a ceiling in my whole life. He says, freestyle and live blueprint from my jigga who never writes. And I was just like, I was thinking, I was just like, is this good? Or is it just the fact that it sounds like she's just actually freestyling it? Like, what's going on here, you know? But but then, again, see, she flips it again. She's like, I'm so nice. I'm everybody's type. Goddamn right. I was like, oh, okay. You know, I can't even hate all that. Like, <laughs> you know, people was like, oh, you're not my type. Bitch, I'm fucking Beyonce. I'm everybody's type, motherfucker. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. So it's just like, ah, it's just... With Jay-Z, he's on point, except for, like, slipping up with the flows every now and then. And with Beyonce, it feels like she's having a little too much fun. But it's just like, can you be mad at her? Because look what they're doing, you know? Yeah, like, I think it definitely reflects, and you can't not be happy listening to these two be happy. Oh, yeah, the energy. Yeah, the energy they give. I think that's part of it, too. They have great chemistry. Even if Beyonce's rapping isn't the best... Her fucking singing is off the chart. If Jay-Z, you know, if he fucks things up a little bit here and there, it's still clever. Can we talk about fucking Love Happy? I'll fully admit. And if you listened to the show recently, we had uh, Adrian Expression on lately. And I've been watching his stuff since we had him on the show. And he had a video as soon as they announced the On the Run (laughs) 2 And he was all, we don't want Jay-Z around. We want new music. How the fuck are you gonna get cheated on him, break up, release a whole album about his ass, (sighs) then go back on tour with him? We don't fuck him running around. And then a goddamn here love happy. And I'm like, do whatever the fuck you want to (laughs) do. It is none 
of my goddamn business what you two decide to do. You can you can break up, get back together, release as many joint albums as you want. I don't fucking care. Go right ahead. Oh my if you guys don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> that goddamn part. Oh my god, that part. I was Oh! I don't even want to say it! You gotta listen to it! <laughs> Just the fucking... Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh chill, chill, God. chill! And she said, she's like, what, we're being real with these people, right? I was like, oh no! <laughs> oh, that I've was beautiful. A, I don't think I've ever heard a song get that real. <laughs> I was in the car like, that car just like... I, th- I think I was even blushing. I was like, oh God, <laughs> no! That was oh, mo- no. that was a more than music moment. I I was not prepared for this shit. This took me by surprise and was way better than I ever would have thought it could be. Five. Oh my god. Five 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 Yo. five five. Friends. Oh my god. We didn't even talk about that one. <laughs> Dude, it's impossible to talk about everything great on this album. Oh my god. We'd for, be here all day. Only nine tracks. Only nine tracks. That's it. <laughs> This is a fucking, this flies by so fast, and you're restarting it as soon as it ends. Yeah, like, even the fact that I, like, Ape Shit was the track that I liked the least, but I'm still not skipping it. Like, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Even uh, 713, I didn't really like the chorus as much because it felt a little derivative. Like, it's literally just aping off of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm doing this for the gangsters all across the world. Like, and they didn't even, like, switch it, you know? Like, they didn't, like, gender flip it. That would have been cool. But this is like, nah. eh. And then, at first, I didn't like the final verse, right? Because it felt a little, it felt a little ass kissy. Like, it's just like, oh, yeah, thanks for the women for saving us. But then, when I paid attention to what was happening in the first two verses and found out, oh, that's what the song was about. It's about, yo, I met the, oh, my God. When he says that one lyric, he says, he, he basically talks about how he met up with Beyonce and how he got with her. And then he says, uh, um, the next time, uh, I knew straight away, the next time we would speak would would be like two years away. You had a man, you shut it down until you two had a break. I bet that dude rude the day you kept me on on the phone while you were away. I was like, oh, shit! <laughs> that guy is somewhere smacking his head again through the fucking wall. <laughs> like, man, if I was him, like, I couldn't listen to this shit. I... <laughs> <laughs> Woo! You never go, Eric Benet. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, never go, Eric Benet. <laughs> <sighs> I am ecstatic. I am feeling the endorphin rush just from this fucking. It's so clever at so many points, man. And, and you know what it is? It's like I know exactly what it is. It's that Will Smith shit, right? Oh. Remember in the 90s where Will Smith would be in movies where it's like, he'd say corny shit, but it's just like, but you're Will Smith, though, so you're so fucking cool that you can do it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, That's where he says, like, uh, I remember it, uh, I remember somebody said, like, in the Independence Day, you know, there's that one line where he said, where uh, uh, Vivica Vox is talking to him right before he leaves, and she's like, you know, you're not as cool as you think you are. And he just looks back at her, and she's like, yes, I am. <laughs> and I'm just like, that's so, f- that's such a corny thing to say, but it's just like, fuck, but he made it work, though. <laughs> <laughs> I can't disagree. <laughs> yeah, right. Like the confidence that is required to say that with conviction is just incredible. Like, <laughs> and so, so you know, when I was able to do that, when I was able to listen to those first two verses and really hear what he was doing, and, and I really think it's because the chorus was so like it didn't really relate to what was happening. It, it was so just like, yeah, I'm Beyonce and I'm rapping on the chorus. Aren't I cool? It's just like. It would have worked if that was, like, you know, more about actually what the verses were about, you know? But it, it made, yeah, it made that final verse when I actually really paid attention. It made it hit more. And, of course, fucking friends, ah, just fucking buy the album, bro. Just, <laughs> like, uh, you know what's really funny? When I rated this, uh, you know what I like to do? I like to add up all the songs and then divide it by, uh, add up all the ratings, divide it by the number of songs. And I got 40 over 9, which... Ends up being 4.444. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, Look, I'll be. <laughs> it's just meant to be, bro. Just buy the fucking album. <laughs> it is a sign from above. <laughs> this week on the Going Off Podcast, as we mentioned before, we are joined once again by Open Mike Eagle, Hi. who very tired, very busy, but he's been nice enough 
to give us some time in his oh so busy day to sit down and shoot the shit with us. I mean, if if they if the people only knew how much shit we'd have shot already. As we learned last time, me and you, uh, we have parallels and interests. Uh, they might be giants. Big fans of that. Uh, wrestling. Big fans of that. Yes. And for me, high school, especially my freshman year, was all about the Offspring. Offspring and Green Day were like my two, the the two biggies. I'll tell you this. I learned how to play the end of Green Day's song "Basket Case." I learned how to play that on guitar. Is that it, or did you learn more no, than no, just I, that one song? It's, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's an interesting place to start, is why I ask. Uh, you know, I was 16, I had a terrible guitar, and I just used to watch that video over and over again, and I figured out how to play that part, because I was really into them. And and that song, and... Um, but see, my music consumption at that time, and it's funny, because I'm sitting here saying, oh, this, these albums were great. I don't know if I ever heard that whole Offspring album. I just like all the singles. My whole music consumption right. was like watching videos and listening to the radio. That's what, what mine was too. So I remember when I started, you know, coming into my own, like as a, you know, teenager and music critic, all this sort of stuff. It was just like a lot of these people's albums I had actually not heard because I literally didn't have the money to buy them. So <laughs> the internet changed the game uh, concerning music criticism because I, I feel like if it weren't for that, you know, uh, uh, shout out to xsao.net if anyone remembers that fucking site. I'm an old school music pirate. Like, all of my piracy came really before you could even pirate via website. Like, you had to download clients. And uh, that's, that's I you know, Soul Seek, Audio Galaxy, LimeWire, Kazaa. I... Where most of the songs you're downloading are credited to, like, the wrong bands. Oh my god. So many Weird Al songs. Yeah, every parody is by Weird Al. <laughs> even if it's got cursing in it. It's Weird Al. They, if they don't know, it's just, that's the default. See, for me, my introduction to Offspring was my dad actually had a copy of Americana, and the music videos I didn't see until, I think it was some CD I had, and it was actually, like, on the D, on the CD. It was enhanced CD. So the videos looked absolutely terrible. The frame rate was awful. And that's where I first saw the music video that you're talking about, the uh, Why Don't You Get a Job video. It was that one. Uh, pretty fly for a white guy, and I think maybe the kids aren't all right. But yeah, most people know them for those. Maybe uh, come out and play, which was off Smash. Come out and play was amazing. Ixnay on the Ombre is my own personal favorite, the one that came out after Smash. But that's neither here nor there. What was on that one? What were the singles on that one? The fucking uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That shit. Fucking all I want. Uh, there was one other song, but yeah, when Crazy Taxi, the soundtrack is Bad Religion and Offspring. All the Offspring oh, no, songs Bad Religion off. was so tight, but I also never heard the album. I only heard them on the radio. Americana, for me, was like, I couldn't tell if it was corny or not, because that was also, like, my first intro to, like, what I thought punk music was. Mmm, we got market too. And granted, some of the songs on Americana are pretty tight. They are pretty dope, but not... Pretty fly for a white guy. That hasn't aged well. Them singles, uh, that video, and that haircut, like, they couldn't expect to hide anything dope behind any of it. Like, that was <laughs> that's bad. Dude. Like, I wonder how old they were at that point, too. Old enough to know better. They look like, like, adults. Like, full-fledged, they should have at least a kid by now. Like, <laughs> they look like you know, 10-year vet heroin addicts, but I'm sure that was just the stylist choice, you know? That was for the credibility, for, yeah. For this, why don't you get a job video? I'm just trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. Because, okay, first of all, he just glides in on a glider, and there's no explanation for that. It's just, that's just what he was doing before the video started, I guess. Spending all the info money on the video, that's all that is. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the music video that also ends with him just, like, pushing a plunger and exploding, like, the block? Yeah, it's just like, it's so unceremonious, it's just like, oh yeah, by the way, I'm supposed to do this. Like, it, it, okay, so the video, everyone's walking in a parade, and it's just like, you know, like, everyone's joining in, you know, walking behind her, it's like, oh, what, are they going somewhere, are they leading to something, and it's just... Nah, I, I just wanted They're to They're walking up. to the end of the video. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. You know what I think we figured out, guys? Um, is this video is when the industry died. <laughs> and, and, and look at his face. Look at his face. 
Look at his face at the end of the video as it explodes. He has no expression. You should love yourself more than to watch the end of that video. <laughs> it's a pop punk version of the God's Plan video. We gave Offspring a million dollars to make a music video. <laughs> they didn't give it away to charity or anything. No, they just, here's all the expensive shit. They, did, they wasted their money on a hang glider, uh, this closed off street to film. Someone jumps out of a window for no real reason. I'm just trying to think about what all was happening at that point. Like where we were as a society and what got us to that point. Cause that was the post grunge era and rock music was still trying to figure itself out. So what happened was there was a whole lot of what Dre thought these were was one hit wonder band. So you had like it and Everclear and uh, and Harvey Danger, although I like Flag Pulse a lot. Like that was that era. Like it was after Grunge, it was like after like like after Kurt Cobain died, nobody else wanted to die, so everybody like turned real happy and got really rich. Uh and Pearl Jam Pearl Jam was fighting Ticketmaster, so they were like <laughs> they were busy. Yeah. Um You mentioned Interscope. I think maybe like the whole Eminem tryhard culture. Ah. Kind of like now is it's like the 90s whatever like mentality. Yeah. Darren, you might be you might be too young to remember this. I know I've got some years on. I, I'm right at the tail end cuz I remember remember Day 9 with that song How many people want to kick some ass? It's like Ooh. You know and they had that Yeah, I do. It's in the Jane Silent Bob soundtrack. <laughs> Oof. Funny that you mention that because Eminem, the lead singer of Lit, and the lead singer, singer of Everclear, they all had the exact same haircut. Were they ever seen at the MTV Music Video Awards at the same place at the same time? I don't think mm-hmm. so. They could walk up to each other and do that mime thing like they're seeing each other in the mirror. Hold they could do that Spider-Man thing. meme where they just point at each other. Yes. <laughs> you made the point about one-hit wonder bands or whatever. Everclear were the one band that had five or six hit singles and they all sounded the same yeah because they were all about his dad <laughs> <laughs> it's like it was kind of interchangeable lyric wise but the music was like this sounds just like that other one and it's, yeah like it's almost like they got lucky and then it was like well shit oh you know what he did you know what he says like wait i got some other shit to say about my dad <laughs> As long as, well, I've got you here. Why are you listening? <laughs> it's like Maroon 5 songs about Jane, but it's songs about my dad. Oh, 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 get this, get this. Af- after their big hit, the name of their next song is One Hit Wonder. <gasps> really? Yeah. Who, Everclear? You're disgusting. <laughs> Offspring tried, they're still putting shit out, and I'm just, like, it's that one, it's that thing where you think once you stop paying attention that they just would, like, stop. They would, like, just go away. I figured Offspring was a thing that, like, as soon as I graduated high school, it would be like I walked through the doorway to leave high school and the ghost that was Offspring would hit the light on the outside of the school and just, (laughs) like, it would just dissipate. (laughs) Like, I'd be rid of that ghost. But no, it's still just out there. And it's like, well, all right. You know, I can't, I can't hate on you for, you know, making money, I guess. But I'm not here for that shit. Not not anymore. I gotta hit you with this ad that that I showed news a couple of days ago. It's on your uh, on your Twitter. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> you gotta watch it. It's like whatever happened to masculinity? It's just like get the shit out of my face. I find myself asking that on a, on a daily basis, especially when I'm looking in the mirror. I go, what the fuck? What happened to masculinity? What happened to the uber male culture? Oh my god, what is this? <laughs> Yo, you know, you know who should feel really bad about this? Motherfucker who did the voiceover. Exactly. <laughs> they took this month, they didn't believe a word of this shit. And took this no. <laughs> the rest of their beer commercial recordings for the month. But this is fucked up. We want to send every man in America a compliment. This is the same dude who does like snap on tools or some shit. Who is. X1 Ignite. Loaded with free testosterone boosting manliness. Get your complimentary bottle by texting NUT. 
Six. Nut. Nut. Why is everything whack now? <laughs> That's the default. Default whack. Ooh. See, I think maybe they did the Fiverr thing that, you know, the fucking PewDiePie special mm -hmm. where it's, we need a voiceover for this ad. No one has, no one has any faith in it. We're gonna, we're gonna pay someone five dollars to record this shit in their bedroom and email it over for the fucking commercial. You can hear him, like, taking a swig of beer right before, it's like, text. <sighs> go, go, go. Nut. <laughs> That little pregnant pause in there. <laughs> Just text. Well, you, you see it on the screen. Text that. <laughs> Open mic eagle. What happened to masculinity? <laughs> where did it go? Where where have all the cowboys gone? Um, I think they have sex with each other. Um, and and I think I think we, I think it's fine. You know, I think that's the new masculinity. And um, I'm one. I'm here for it, man. I mean, I just read a report. That's saying straight people don't exist. So the the gay agenda has officially succeeded. Happy Pride Month, 2018. I'm sorry. I, again, this is completely irrelevant, but I do want to talk about one of your songs. Uh, okay. <laughs> like, I'm just jumping topics. It's like shit. We have less time now. Because <laughs> the fucking. We're gonna make it work. Because Skype can eat an entire ass with no fucking napkin. Anyway, uh, nah. you had a song. Yes, with no... <laughs> not where you thought that was gonna go, did you? He's not allowed... No, yeah. No fucking... While he's eating that ass... Against, while Skype is eating that ass against its fucking will, it can't even have the courtesy of having a napkin to, to, to keep the ass stains from, from fucking up his shirt. No, he, it, Skype will not get that courtesy. Uh, who, wait a minute. So whoever's ass is getting eaten, it's on them to clean their ass before, before somebody eats it, even if there's somebody at <laughs> all yeah, that's that's the common decency right there. I agree. You know what you're getting yourself into, or what they're getting themselves into. You had a song called Qualifiers, and I just really understood what that song was about. Mm. And like, because I was like, wait, Qualifiers? Why are they like qualified to do something I don't get? And then I was like, oh, Qualifiers as in? And then the chorus happened, and it's like, we're the best. Mostly, <laughs> we sometimes have the freshest rhymes, and it's just yeah. I, I I love it because it's so like not, not what a rap song is supposed to be, but it's realistic as to like when you are writing a song where you're like I have to brag about how awesome I am, and I know this isn't true. Yeah, I wanted to make my rap lives like really accurate. You know what I mean? To like round them off. I don't want them to be uh, normal boasts. I want them. To like um like confessions <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it's almost like uh the other song you did no selling was just like oh yeah no this horrible thing happened no no, no i'm fine i'm not even gonna i'm just i just pretended like it doesn't <laughs> I, I ain't cried since like 94 or something <laughs> songs about ptsd first of all it's a wrestling term no selling is a wrestling term oh yeah that's Ooh. right uh, that music video is awesome, by the way. I forgot. Yeah. I think that came out since the last time we had you on. I love that video. Yeah, I was really proud of that one. Thank you. And, um, yeah, so it's about, you know, when you're a, a good guy wrestler and it comes at a time in the match where you have to pretend like the bad guy punching you doesn't hurt anymore and the crowd gets really into it because it looks like you just, like, found this. this you're hulking power. up. Power, exactly. I don't, I don't, yeah, fuck that guy, though. But, um. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We, we need a new term. And warrior doesn't work either. So. That's true. <laughs> um. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but it's, it's that thing, right? Um. But I think that, you know, people do that a lot in regular life, especially men. It, it goes part of it's, you know, the, the guys who made the, the, uh, the nut commercial, they would consider this part, <laughs> of, uh, part of the demonization <laughs> America. Cause I, it, it's kind of a, it's kind of a not a critique, but a commentary on like the the, the kind of walls that men put up and mm -hmm. just think like nothing hurts them and how like, you know, we kind of have a you can you can like go through a whole lifetime doing that. And it kind of creates this whole culture where like, you know, um, men have to pretend like nothing hurts. You know, I, I still see people in 2018, which amazes me doing the um, I'm not crying. You're crying. And it's like, 
it's like I get that's a I get that's a joke, right? But like, do, it's it's okay. <laughs> like I don't know why people are trying to make excuses for crying. I fucking said this on the show. Darren sent me some video to a clip from the movie Life with Eddie Murphy. <laughs> I talked about this on the show, and I'd never seen it before. And it fucking made me cry. That movie's got some real sad parts, man. That, that movie's hella underrated. Yeah. And I, I don't have shame in saying that a movie from, what, I don't know when, even... Like, 99. Right around this time. Right around the, uh... Right around the, uh, the hey, no way! Uh, hey, no... This is the 1999 hour, I guess. <laughs> and, you know, we just kind of have to work as a society to make more space for men to not feel like they have to, like, hide that shit. That's all. For sure. I, I love the one lyric, specifically, my legs are tired because I've been running things. Now, what I love about that lyric is that if you took that exa- those exact same words and put them in a normal, like, brag rap song, it, would just, it, would so- it wouldn't sound out of place, you know? Like, my legs tired because I'm running things, but it's like, but in this context, the important thing is, like, I'm actually really tired. <laughs> There's one part where you repeat it, and it sounds like it's off the beat. You know what I'm talking about? Nope. Where <laughs> he's always on beat. <laughs> well, I thought you were doing. I don't make mistakes. Go well, ahead. See what I was. See, I was gonna come for you. I was gonna be like, oh, it must be like a hemiola thing. But let's. I was like, oh, okay, I see what you're doing. Well, I don't, I don't remember honestly. Um, <laughs> but you, I, I, you know, if you remind me, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll admit it. <laughs> I have to ask: Do you play injustice at all? I have not played Injustice. Like I've been like really out of the loop on fighting games. I have uh, the Dragon Ball joint. I think that's pretty dope, but I haven't had it. But it's a dope ass game. Actually, I got a question for you. Did you ever play Def Jam Fight for New York? Oh fuck yeah, I did. <laughs> that shit was amazing. I wonder why they never made another one. Like this is such a genius idea. They made another Def Jam game. It was called Def Jam Icon, but it sucked complete ass and was nothing like the 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 original, you know, uh, first two games. And yeah, like you're right. It's just like, doesn't that seem like that could be like a franchise that could last forever? Like, oh yeah, every couple of years, who are the new rappers? You know, I don't know what would stop them. From, I mean, that's crazy to me that nobody does that. I mean, I guess the licensing fees are probably pretty uh, exorbitant. But, I mean, but it's the same as fucking NBA 2K, right? Like, yeah. how'd they ask for that license? Oh, my God. Do you remember the fucking taunts that they would say at the end? Fucking ice tea. It's like, you're a punk, your ma- your daddy's a punk, and your mama's a bitch. Like, it's just, well, shit. <laughs> By the way, can I just say Snoop Dogg's the only person who can do anything he wants? Like, that's the only thing that's actually true for him. What, like, think about it. He made a porn tape, like... Like, he starred in a porno. It, maybe he wasn't getting his dick, but, but he was in a porno. And then this year, he released a gospel album. Like, who? Who else? <laughs> Game show, and he's had a sketch show, like, ever. It's all... It's, it's, he can do whatever he wants. I wonder how I wonder how that happens. Like, I can't remember a specific thing he did. He got did. Get really famous in 1992... Oh, okay. Specifically. I'm writing yeah, that down. You got to be real young then and do something hella iconic. Mm. And, uh, and then you got to have Interscope money. Mm, yeah. <laughs> it's just Interscope. <laughs> you got to be involved in, in, or adjacent to the most legendary rap shit ever for 20 years. Mm, yeah. And whatever you want. And you also have to manage to stay alive during all that and not go to jail. That's that's the yeah. tricky part. Yeah. He almost did not do. <laughs> yeah, he got dangerously close. I, I'm still yeah. trying to figure out the how to be famous in '92 part. That might be what I'm hung up on. Yeah, that's that's the difficult thing. I was too busy being in first grade. Oh, you're young. I'm you're I'm, young. I'm, I'm I'm thirty. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm twenty six. Oh, you guys are so young. Oh, my God. <laughs> how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. how, how old? I'm 37. 37? Yeah, man. See, it's weird. If you would have told me, hey, man, I'm 37, when I was like tw- when I was like 28, I would have been like, damn, 
But now that I'm fucking 30, it's like, yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't sound... Like, I think I've oh, turned no, no, back... Oh, no, no, Make no mistake about it, views. 37 is old. You avoid oh. it. Oh. Oh. Man, I'm already feeling old now. I'm too He's young so to be feeling this old. It's worse. It's mm. way worse. <laughs> Can you give me any tips, any things to watch out for? Uh, don't get old. Oh, That's okay. The name. Don't, don't, don't use your knees too much? Never. Mm. If you can, get a wheelchair. <laughs> It's a, oh, a preemptive wheelchair. Yeah, skip all that basketball shit. <laughs> well, that about wraps it up for this week's episode of the Going Off Podcast. Thank you very much to Open Mike Eagle for taking the time. There are squirrels fighting on our balcony right now. What? Wait, say that again? <laughs> there, was, oh, there was one squirrel, and another one came up, and they fucking stood on their hind legs and started hitting each other with their front paws. I'm not even making that up. That just happened. What the hell is going on in this This is podcast? breaking news. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. That couldn't wait. Thank you very much to our good friend, Open Mike Eagle, for taking the time out of his busy day to come on the show once again. Thank you to our friend, Dr. Goatman, for requesting In Rainbows by Radiohead. Once again, a little reminder, if you want to request an album to be reviewed on the podcast... Simple pledge to patreon.com slash rap critic, patreon.com slash muse. Check the pages for details. Follow us on Twitter. Subscribe to us on YouTube. All of our old episodes, if this is your first time listening, are on SoundCloud, iTunes, and YouTube. And until next time, for the Going Off Podcast, I'm Muse. And I'm the rap critic. Uh, did you have anything? Mm, nope.